Hello there. Welcome back to another episode. And on today's episode, or situation, whatever you want to call it, we are changing the fuel pump on a 300ZX 2 plus 0. Now you may ask, why does the 2 plus 0 matter? Well, that matters because the fuel tank is in a different position than a 2 plus 2. On the 2 plus 2, it actually sits over the rear subframe, and to do anything with it, you have to drop the rear subframe. From my understanding, I don't know where the fuel pump is. I'm assuming you can access it from the trunk, I think you can, but on a 2 plus 0, it is behind or underneath the, the rear deck lid. So that's going to be like this part right here, and I'll go over that here in a second. But what we have to do is upgrade the fuel pump to support the LS, and then also change out the hanger filter, and maybe the hanger, I don't think we need to. But if you didn't know, this, as the fluid raises, this little container is filled with air, and as the fuel raises inside of the fuel pump, this little sensor, which is probably a potentiometer, sends a signal wire to your instrument cluster, and that tells you how much fuel you have left in your tank. So for all those 19, 18 year olds who run their car on E and below E, that means that you have less than this much fuel in your tank, <laughs> and you really don't want to do that. Uh, we're gonna go over a couple of the tools that you want to use for this, or that you'll need. And it's really, really simple. You will need a nice colorful pair of pliers. That's the only thing I could find. But if that's your style, that's your style. Then you're going to need a 8mm and a 10mm socket. I'm getting fuel dripped on me right now. Quick interruption. Disaster! Okay. You got, you're going to need a pair of angle up pliers. This comes really in handy for the fuel hose clips that hold the fuel hoses onto the hat. And then a ratchet, 3 8 quarter inch accordingly to your socket. And a 300ZX. And that's it. Fairly simple. Let's figure out how to do it. And I will see you on the outside. We are out of the 300. And first step that you're going to have to do is pull your rear cover out. That just comes out. If you still have the t-top cover holders just slide them out of these holes and then to get this cover out you can see there's one two three four five six seven eight uh, bolts and those are going to be the 10 millimeter bolts so that's what you need a 10 millimeter socket for and if you come to the trunk and look right here you're gonna have I think one Two, three, I want to say six eight millimeter bolts that hold the actual fuel hat in on top of it which you can see the hole so you have six and then you're going to have four 10 millimeter bolts that hold it there but before you do that you have to pop these rear covers off that side pops off also and those are 10 millimeters so 10 millimeters for this cover and that cover and these four bolts and then eight millimeters for that you're going to have one, two, and there's a third one, which is somewhere in here, but that fuel hose goes to that hat, and that's just to pick fuel from that side and transfer it to this side. That's all that does, but your fuel pump is actually on this side, uh, and then we still have some fuel down in there. Uh, yeah, but you can see how it crosses over. And that's your fuel tank. And whenever you fill it up, that's what's in there. So we gotta evacuate fuel out of there and out of there, because I don't know how old this is. And this car has been sitting already for a couple years. So we're gonna pull the fuel out of that. Just gonna use the evacuator. Uh, probably not gonna film that just because it is, but it is extremely flammable. So make sure you're not using any heat or any flammable ignition source. And with the hoses, if they're really tough to get off there, what you can do is take WD-40, spray them on there. And then sometimes you can use a heat source to heat them up, but you can't do that in this case. Don't do that in this case. 
Uh, and yeah, next will be the fuel pump disassembly. Alright, so this is the old fuel filter, and it just, that vacuum hose goes like boop on that. These two clamps grab on the outside, and then this little push clip here just pushes onto it. There's a ton of like build up on it. So you can see where we took a metal brush and started cleaning it. So we're going to take that off now. Five compatible fuel pump, and we have to mimic where it's mounted on there. This piece was already on there, so we started transferring that over. And now I have to get the little C clip on there and make sure we'll figure out how to mount this. <laughs> that doesn't work or flows too much fuel, not enough fuel, or just a fuel pump, you are going to fix it by giving it the old yeetus of the fetus, just like plan B. You ready? Take one. Take two. All right, uh, what we ended up doing is we Remove the outer fuel housing, which you could have seen in the previous part. Put the new one in, put two fuel lines in between the outer housing and the new fuel pump, because the new fuel pump is very small. And that way it holds it in place. And those two fuel lines are just sitting right there. So I'm gonna turn this on. Okay, so why we did that is that way this doesn't move inside of here. Then one of these hose clamps secures it to this part of the hat. And this one is just securing those fuel lines inside to the fuel pump to the outer housing. Next, we got our Mighty Car Mods fuel lines for, I think this is the transfer tube from the other side of the pump to put it back into the tank. New fuel line to the OEM fuel 45 degree adapter. And make sure that you get that little C-clip on right there. Down to a generic fuel strainer this is the one that came with it but it wouldn't work because this just usually goes like right there obviously OEM one was all the way down here so you would have like half a tank and then you'd run out but how this is gonna work now is as you can see it's gonna be down in the bottom and you're gonna have probably I think that's like a half a gallon or a gallon of fuel in the bottom of the tank but now we have to any, without damaging anything set this down here and we have to wire the new one in and plug it in well not plug it in but solder it in to these OEM connections so red and red black and black super simple uh, this comes with a like a fuel line kit not a fuel line kit but a fuel line plug and play but it doesn't plug into anything so I'm probably just going to snip it here and then just solder it in there and be done with it. That's how the OEM one was. It lasted forever. So that'll last forever. What you just watched is me soldering in the positive and the negative to the fuel hat and it's self-explanatory so red on red black on black of the original OEM connections and the OEM ones didn't have any like sort of heat shrink or anything on the actual connection for the fuel pump it had it on the fuel pump but not the fuel hat I'm not entirely sure what this whole connection junction block is called but there is this was all exposed so I'm not worried about it and as you can see that's on there that's on there I've already gave it a good nice and tug and it's not going anywhere this is a water sealed connector or a 
sealed connector so no fuel should get inside of it so we're good there and honestly this thing's ready to be dropped back into the tank so that is how you rebuild or replace a fuel pump or we manufacture a fuel fuel sending unit assembly i'm not sure what that whole thing is called all right we are back in the hatch of the 300 in my pajamas because it went from 85 degrees yesterday evening to like 50 which i i love this weather so much more uh because i can dress like this and not sweat so anyways we are back in the hatch fuel fuel hat assembly fuel pump assembly whatever you want to call it is fully rebuilt so now what we can do is take the plastic off the fuel strainer that's what it's called is the fuel strainer and I couldn't remember that for the life of me earlier. So now we can take my homemade filter device so it doesn't vent all out. I did evacuate like five gallons out of here. It's been sitting for almost two years now, so it needed to come out. So let's take this off and see if we can get this thing down in there. the next day and we got the fuel pump back in my battery died on my phone while I was filming and I haven't looked yet but so I'm not sure where it left off but we got the cover back on and as you can see there's just four studs here everything else is back together I don't know if I can get this off without tearing anything but as you can see it's back on it's back together it's rewired. I didn't really have to mess with the wiring other than soldering the new connection onto the hat. And next is... That's actually a really good point. <laughs> what is next? Oh, to deal with the fuel. So what we have to do next, and that'll be on the next episode. Make sure to check it out. Is we will have to mount the fuel sender unit and then route it into the AN fitting for the fuel. I haven't decided if I want to mount it there or if I want to mount it there or not because of just the distribution of the fuel. On the OEM one, there's a split port that goes across and then fans out like that and fans out like that. But we'll figure that out and that's it for now. That's how you install an aftermarket fuel pump on the 300ZX on top of part of the LS build. So thanks for tuning in. If you liked what you saw, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Have a good night.